Welcome to Heath Rowles Barbecue. On today's episode of Shooting the Q, I'm going to be cooking a low and slow Wagyu brisket from the butcher shop. The sun's starting to go down here at home. It's cooled down a little bit. Luckily, it's in the 80s right now, about 84 out here, feeling good. I got my Traeger fired up. Let's get this thing trimmed and get on for an all-night cook. Now this is an A9 Wagyu brisket from the butcher shop. It did not make the competition grade. He sent it to me. Uh, you know, it was in his pick pile, but it's plenty thick to me. It's got some good marbling on it. Let's get this thing trimmed up. So the first thing I want to do, I'm just going to start coming over with my knife here and removing some of this fat down the top of it. And just ease down and clean it up. Get right up on that silver skin. Just follow it down. And that's all you want to keep doing is till you work this off. Now, I'm gonna keep cleaning this up and just follow along as we go. Now, when you want to, you can raise your brisket up like this with one hand, and it allows you to get on that fat without getting into the meat. You can just stay right there on it. See that? No meat on top. But you have to bend it up to be able to get that angle on it. You wanna make sure you have a good, sharp knife. Now this knife right here, I'm using a Victor Knox deboning knife. It's a six inch curved deboning knife. I have a lot of different kind of knives. I love Victor Knox. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and knock off the end of this brisket right here. That way I can tell when I go to cut it. I know I'm gonna cut back this away on it. I'm gonna go ahead and come right here and knock off some of this thin edge right here. And I'm gonna keep a lot of this meat, the reason I'm keeping it on my cutting board, some of the fat I want, but some of that meat I trimmed off, I'm gonna keep, put it in my bag, and I'm gonna use it for grinding to make some great burgers with. And since we're going low and slow, we're not gonna trim a lot off of the bottom, just a little bit kinda of off the point. I wanna kinda of leave it natural and just let it go. Now remember, this is not a comp style brisket. I'm not trying to waste a lot of it. I'll save as much as I can, but I'm just trying to round everything up. No sharp edges or anything like that. Now, when you've got any kind of oxidation on this meat here, you're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim it back. I'm gonna come in here, cut a little bit off all the way down. And let's go ahead and get in here a little bit more. Oh yeah. Now, you can see where my point and my flat right here come under. Now I'm gonna keep trimming some of this hard fat off of here. And I see, and keep knocking a little bit of it down. Remember, I don't want anything. I'm gonna go in this right here a little more. A little hard fat right there. Get a little more of that off. And I hadn't even been on the bottom yet because I'm not too concerned with the bottom. Uh, these A9s, they're particularly only have about a quarter inch of fat on the bottom. And look at that, pretty clean. Tell you what I'm gonna do though, this right here is on that point. Let's go ahead and take some of this off. You can see how that's not gonna render some of that fat. So I'm just gonna get under here and keep working some of that off of that, that point till we get it trimmed all off. Now, same thing again, go under it with your hand here. Be careful not to cut your fingers if the meat's getting close. And just shave a little bit of that off. So all you gotta do is just keep coming. Now, it's getting kind of thin on that end, I feel it. And remember, you can take as little or as much as you want of this brisket off. You can use any season that you want to. You can keep it simple. Today, I'm gonna be using my garlic jalapeno and hot rub. I'm going for a little bit more of a spicier bite on this Wagyu brisket. The way that I'm doing it, low and slow. Now, trim a few of those edges off. And like I said, if you want to take, I think that's pretty good there. Now, if you want to take a pair of shears, scissors, and run on there and, and get every edge around that thing perfect, by all means do it. You won't do nothing but help it. But this is just a simple eating brisket for me today. I probably took it a little further on trimming than I normally do. Uh, but you can see that's going to be a great eating brisket when I go to slicing it 
for just a good all around low and slow brisket. So I'm gonna get everything wiped down and let's get some injection mixed up. All right, we've got 16 ounces of beef broth here, uh, or beef stock, excuse me. You can use either one you want. I'm just a stock fan myself. I've got my new beef injection right here. I'm only gonna mix a half a cup with it to 16 ounces, just like the instructions say. You don't have to inject if you don't want to on this Wagyu brisket. Honestly, I don't really know why I am. You don't need to, but I just want a little bit more, more beefy flavor in it that I get from my injections and of course the phosphates and everything that it has, it just works good. I'm gonna give it the bite that I'm looking for. Just take a half a cup, reseal your bag back up. Make sure you lock your lid down too before you go to shaking. All right? And a key note, I hold it away from me. Shake. Now get it shook up, and then we'll be ready to inject. All right, I've got my brisket finally trimmed up, got it on a rack, on a sheet pan, just to catch some of the liquid that spills out. I've got my injection mixed up, a half a cup to 16 ounces of beef broth. It's gonna be really beefy. If you wanna cut it back a little bit to a quarter cup, by all purpose, do you, I'm gonna do me. Now, let's get this in here, get the lid off. Now, I've got my injector here I normally use for comps. It's just, a, honestly, a cattle medicine injector that I ordered. Um, and so let's get that pumped up. Now, you need to be careful that your hose don't come out of here when you're doing this because it will make a huge mess. I'm gonna try to shoot away from me so it don't get on me, but as we all know, it's not guaranteed when you're injecting meat. Now, I wanna do a grid-like pattern. You can see I'm keeping it very simple with this needle. I've got it turned down. I can feel it going in there and I'm just using a checkerboard pattern and going down that flat's so all I'm doing. Now you just wanna keep going on, work yourself all the way down it, flip it over and do the same thing. All right, out of 16 ounces, I got a couple ounces left. I'm gonna call it good, put this in the sink, get this wiped up, and we're gonna get this thing rubbed down. Now that I've got my brisket injected, I got it flipped over, got it dried off pretty good with a paper towel, and now I wanna get a good base coat of my garlic jalapeno rub. Now this is gonna be a salt, pepper, garlic rub with a little bit of jalapeno powder in it and some onion powder and other flavors. If you've got another AP rub that you like, by all means, use it. Now that I've got a good base layer of garlic jalapeno rub, I'm gonna come back with a good base layer of hot rub. Now I'm not trying to get too crazy on the bottom side. Just a good coat. Now I've got that padded in good. I'm gonna get it flipped over. Get it arranged on this rack like the way that I'm gonna cook it. Cause I'm gonna leave it on this rack, not on the pan but on the rack. All right, let's get some garlic jalapeno rub on it. Now that I got a good base coat of that, let's get some hot rub on it. All right, now we're gonna let this thing set here Sweat in about 30 minutes and we're gonna get it on the pit, 225 degrees, super smoke over some roll oak charcoal pellets. And we're gonna check this thing in the morning and see what it looks like. All right, we've got our brisket trimmed, injected, seasoned, and it's on a rack, ready to go on our Traeger Timberline. It's late in the evening here and we're gonna check this brisket in the morning. I've got it set to 200 degrees. I'm gonna let it go and see what happens. I'm gonna get it on and I'll see y'all in the morning. All right, it's been a long night here. We've got our low and slow brisket on our Traeger grill. It's been cooking 12 hours. We're right at about 185 degrees internal. And so I'm gonna get it off, get it over here on this butcher paper and wrap it up. Now that our brisket is laid on our butcher paper, you wanna make sure that you've squirted a little bit of beef tallow on the bottom, a little bit on top. I'm gonna say I'll probably use a half a cup to three quarters of a cup of beef tallow full. Uh, 
I melted down about a half, about a full cup to be honest I didn't use but a little over half of it so remember do that start wrapping your brisket up fold it over tightly return it to your cooker put the probe back in back in it and cook it to 200 degrees and that's it just as simple as it can be and then we're gonna wait and rest it now we're moving the brisket it's hit 200 degrees I'm gonna let it rest in my Yeti cooler for at least four to six hours before I slice it. But let's get it in the cooler and get it rested up and get it shut and I'll see y'all in about six hours. All right, we are back. We've had a long rest period. All right, just to recap, I'm gonna go over everything before I take my brisket out of the cooler. We started out with a 15 pound Wagyu A9 brisket from our butcher shop in Pensacola, Florida from my good buddy, Kevin Green down there. All you gotta do is call him up We'll put the link down below. We trimmed it, minimal, because it comes with decal already out of it. We injected it with our injection, just like the package says. We seasoned it with garlic jalapeno and hot rub. We put it on our Traeger at 225 degrees, and that brisket took 12 hours, and it reached a tad over 180, close to 185. It had great looking bark. We then pulled it off, wrapped it up in butcher paper with a little bit of beef tallow, Put it back on, it cooked an additional two hours. We pulled it off, stuck it in our Yeti cooler. It's been resting there for about five hours now. And it's a moment of truth. Only thing left was for me to grab this brisket out of the cooler. So let me go get it. Oh, it smells so good. All right, now's the moment of truth. Let's get this brisket unwrapped. Oh, I wish y'all could feel this thing. It was like butter. Look at that. Oh, yeah. Not a lot in there. But man, this thing looks good. Look at the jiggle on that. Does your meat jiggle like that? It's a moment of truth. Let's get in here. Mm. Let's slice this thing. Let's see what we got. You remember, you want to go with the grain. I pull this brisket 200 degrees. Moment of truth. Yeah, I'd say that brisket's all right. I'm not going to keep squeezing on it because I want to keep that moisture in it. Let's get to slicing this thing see what it's like. That right there is a money shot. That right there, that fatty brisket and all that, that right there is what we're looking for when you slice into that. And you can see that. That right there is a good... Mm -mm -mm. The key is resting, injecting, the right seasoning. You can even keep it with salt and pepper if you wish. You just gotta treat your brisket with love and care. And that's what makes a great bite of beef. Mm -mm -mm. That wants to make my eyes roll back. That's so good. Remember, if you like what we're doing on our channel, be sure to like, subscribe, follow along, and share it. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. We'll see you next week.